Good afternoon. This is a video um, from Lindsay and um, this is for my uh, GCSE group and it's for the lesson at number seven that um, took place live and online um, on the 15th of June. So this is if you couldn't access that lesson. And um, let's start off um, by saying I've already recorded this once um, and it, it was too long. So I'm going to try and just be really careful not to make it too long. Um, so I hope you're all safe and well. And I hope that you were able um, to read the second text that I asked you to read from um, the November 2018 GCSE um, paper for English language and that was paper two which is the non-fiction. Um, so our learning objective is to compare two texts and the writer's perspective. So we're really going to focus on that writer's perspective today. Um, now I just reminded you of our last week's focus which was to have a look at question one on paper two um, and you had to pick out four true statements from a list. Um, so that that we talked about the fact that you need to take your time with it because you need to not rush it through because in theory that should be full marks that you could e easily achieve on the paper but actually people tended to um, perhaps rush through it and that was where marks had been dropped in the past. So I just wanted to remind you of that um, because actually we were looking at um, a text for that called All Cyclists Fear Bad Drivers. That was source A in the inserts for November 2018. Um, and a couple of things I wanted to say about that really. Um, so our focus um, is this um, assessment objective that this refers to, which is, um, so assessment objectives are, are important because they're what the examiner is looking for. So it's uh, the one that says compare writers' ideas and perspectives and how they are conveyed. So we really want to think about that word perspectives. Um, that's a, a probably a key word for today. And today, perspectives is, is all about the way that you see things. And actually, everybody sees th things differently. Otherwise, the world would be a boring place. OK, so it's interesting to look at other people's perspective on things. Um, and that's what makes writers you know, um, I was interested in writing, I think. So um, we're having a look at two texts, source A and source B from November of 2018. Um, all cyclists fear bad drivers. OK, so let's have a brief overview of that. It was written in the Guardian newspaper in 2016. You might like to have it in front of you as well as source B, which we are going to refer to too. Um, so if you want to pause the video, feel free and then just go and get a copy of it or have it um, available to you on your computer. Uh, so it starts off, ask most people who draw, who ride a bike regularly in the UK and they'll be and they'll happily recount a list of terrifying, which is quite an emotive word, or alarming incidents caused by the deliberate action of another road user. So they're talking about almost pitting bikes against cars and they give um, an, a, a bit of anecdotal evidence about um, when they were um, put to the test by a, a car and actually had um, really felt like that car driver was gambling with their lives and they used that metaphor um, again to talk about you know um, sort of waging a war um, on the roads, um, but then also pointed out that most cyclists are drivers as well. Um, so they just kind of summed up by saying, um, let's see, um, that, that drivers really should be made to be aware that they should be really, really mindful of the fact that they are in a car and <laughs> cyclists are not. So the final, um, couple of sentences but most of all remember that these are human beings unprotected flesh and bone seeking to get to work to see their friends to return to their loved ones okay using the rule of three using emotive language talking about love talking about friendship and really sort of bringing it home that these people are, are humans just like you know um comparing them to themselves really so um 
you know, using that sort of persuasion, really. However much of a rush you think you are in, it never, ever justifies putting them at risk. So it's kind of um, a safety warning for drivers. Um, and that really has quite a clear tone in it, doesn't it? That piece of writing. OK, so then I've asked you to think about source B. Now, source B, I gave you a picture of the Countess of Malmesbury and I asked you to think about some questions. Um, what can we infer about the picture? Um, well, she's obviously it was set in a time gone by. It's actually written in um, 1896. Um, this lady was a countess, so she had um, a job, which was to be a countess and look after the people of her area, Malmesbury in Wiltshire. Um, and uh, we can infer that it was taken a long time ago because it's black and white, because of what she's wearing. Um, and obviously because um, the text mentions a handsome cab, handsome. So it's H-A-N-S-O-M which is not handsome, I think, good looking. It's about, um, it's, it's a name for the type of cab that used to drive around London pulled by horses. Um, were attitudes the same at this time? Let's have a look. How do you think things might have changed since then? Okay, so we might assume that, that perhaps cyclists would feel a bit more safe um, in the modern age, but it seems by source A that that, that wasn't correct. <laughs> OK, so this is the question that you would have been asked if you were doing uh, that paper. So you need to refer to source A and source B. OK, yes, we are. Both sources describe the similar ways in which drivers behave. OK, so this is talking about similarities, not differences. OK, so in this comparison question, it's really being clear that you're asking you're being asked about similarities so again it's really important that you look at those key words isn't it and think right what is this question asking me so use details from both sources to write a summary of what you understand about the similar behavior of the drivers so let's have a look at this extract um, from countess Malmesbury. okay um she is, by the sounds of it, a very um, knowledgeable woman, and also she has this lovely, light-hearted tone in her writing. So she's 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 saying that she doesn't feel safe, but she's actually also doing it in a kind of ironic, humorous way. Um, her tone is quite ironic and humorous. Um, so she describes her experience of riding a bicycle in the streets of London, um, and she wrote the magazine article in 1896. And the, the, there are lots of pic a picture here of lots of horse-drawn carriages. Um, so cycle, cycling had become popular and um, for women as well as men. I'm not sure whether there's a little bit of sexism in here with uh, regards to the handsome cab driver. Maybe he doesn't like female um, cyclists. I'm not sure, we'll have a look. So she says, a new sport has lately been devised by the drivers of handsome cabs. It consists of chasing the lady who rides her bicycle in the streets of the metropolis. OK, so she doesn't think it's a sport, but it's almost like they act like it is. Um, having now been the prey of the handsome cabman for nearly a year and having given him several exciting runs, I cannot help feeling that cycling the streets would be nicer to use a mild, mild expression, if he tried not to kill me. So she uses a couple of key um, pieces of language there, doesn't she? She uses the word prey. Now we know, we think about the word prey, we think of birds of prey that hunt, um, and hunting is a word that we associate with being the prey, the predator and the prey. So um, it's kind of using um, this metaphor to describe the way that she feels um, and it says given him several several exciting runs because obviously if some a predator is is trying to catch a, a, a prey of of it of its own it will um feel a certain sense of excitement won't it so um 
the chase is supposed to be quite exciting for predators. So she's really referring to um, this as if she feels hunted. Um, riding on a track began to bore me as soon as I'd learned to balance. So she sounds like kind of lady that's really wanting to look for an adventure. But I remained steadily practicing until I could ease, turn easily, cut figures of eight, get on and off quickly on either side and stop without charging into unwel unwelcome obstacles. This done, burning to try my fate in traffic and yet as nervous as a hare that feels the greyhound's breath, I launched my little bicycle early one Sunday morning in July into the stormy oceans of Sloan Street. Okay, there's so, such a lot of vivid imagery in there. There's such a lot of um, figurative language. So uh, language that gives us a, a picture in our minds and helps us to imagine her feelings. So nervous as a hare that feels the greyhound's breath. We know, know that um, greyhounds are... Um, are used for greyhound racing and they are given a hair or a fake hair sometimes um, which they are they are made to chase okay so it's about again that feeling of hunter and prey predator and prey um, so she's extending that metaphor through from the first paragraph isn't she i launched so what do you do you launch a bicycle you launch a bicycle yeah, it sounds a bit like a ship, doesn't it? Launching a little bicycle, little, emphasising how small she felt, how vulnerable she felt, early one Sunday morning in July into the stormy oceans of Sloan Street. Well, there isn't an ocean in Sloan Street. It's a metaphor. She's extending the use of metaphor here, isn't she? So stormy ocean, a stormy ocean is a large expanse of water, which is perilous and dangerous and so really she's using these really um interesting forms of description to try and get her across her point that how she's feeling about this okay so um i want you to make sure that you've read all the way through that please and then i want you to have a look at the question again so please can you also have a look at the answer that I have given you which is it says it's a clear and relevant summary and that is on slide six of the powerpoint can you read through that and then I would like you to have a go at thinking about the way that the writers use comparison and I want you to just give me um, a list of three things that you could say about those texts, you don't need to put it into a paragraph yet for me. Just think of a list of three things that you could say that are similar about the two pieces of writing. I want you really to think about the writer's perspective, their viewpoint, okay? Because that's what our assessment objectives are asking us for. So this question focuses on that, all right? Um, please feel free to send me your answers. Um, at the very least, make sure that you have uh, read the PowerPoint, read the answer that is given and annotated both texts. Thank you and stay safe.